It's 10 a.m. You're watching Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. Let's start straight away with the top stories this morning. Interpol issues red corner notice against Jesh e Mohammed chief Maulana Masood Azhar and his brother Rauf. NIA makes formal request to visit Islamabad to probe the Pathan Court air base attack. India rejects Pakistan's objection to draft bill on Kashmir map, says its government's duty to ensure country's geography is protected properly. No clear breakthrough as talks on brokering peace in Syria end without agreement on new dates. Ground situation worsens with new faction fighting leading to more deaths. At least 77 people killed and more than 140 injured in three bombings in Iraqi capital of Baghdad, latest in a series of deadly strikes this year. And Wrestling Federation of India to meet Sushil Kumar today after High Court directive to amicably resolve the matter. Hopes of a real birth for two-time Olympic medalist seem to be fading now. Well, India has outrightly rejected Pakistan's objection to a draft bill on the Kashmir map. Reacting to Pakistan's objection, Union Minister for Home Kiran Rijiju said... It was the duty of the government to ensure that India's geography is projected properly. He also said, we don't take cognizance to Pakistan's objection to the draft bill. Rijidu's comments came after Pakistan said it has expressed serious concern to the UN over a draft bill over the map of Kashmir and called upon the world body to uphold its resolutions and urged India to stop such acts which are in violation of the international law. The draft, the Geospatial Information Regulation Bill 2016, is still in a conceptual stage and the Union Cabinet will discuss it before taking approval of the Parliament. Now, as per the draft legislation, wrong depiction of the map of India could land the violators in jail with a maximum term of seven years and a fine up to 100 crore rupees. It will also be mandatory to take permission from a government authority before acquiring, disseminating, publishing or distributing any geospatial information of India. Pakistan says the official map of India has been depicting the disputed territory of Jammu and Kashmir as part of India, which it claims is factually incorrect and legally untenable. The proposed bill is an entirely internal legislative matter of India, since the whole state of Jammu and Kashmir is an integral part of India. Pakistan or any other party has no locus standi in the matter. The government firmly rejects Pakistan's repeated and increasing attempts to impose on the international community matters that India has always been open to address bilaterally with Pakistan. Abhi to ye to ek initial concept stage hai. Isko lekar ke Pakistan ya koi aur is tarah ka pratikriya dena koi avashyakta nahi hai aur ham log nahi samajhte ki isko usko fir cognizance lena chahiye. Mr. Kiran Rijiju, in fact, is the Minister of State for Home uh, and it was wrongly quoted in the above package. Moving on, even as Pakistan continues to keep India in suspended animation on the Pathan Court air base attack, the National Investigation Agency made a request to Islamabad seeking permission to visit Pakistan for further investigation. Meanwhile, in some success for India, the Interpol issued red corner notices against Jaish e Mohammed chief Maulana Masood Azhar and also his brother Abdul Rauf. After Pakistan failed to send any reply to the letters rogatory on the Pathan Court Air Base attack case, the National Investigation Agency has made a formal request to Islamabad seeking permission to visit Pakistan. They are not bothered about the militancy. If we find out, you know, the team goes, NIA team goes and find out, you know, who are the people involved. And we have already given all the details to them, you know. Their main... Uh, uh, they don't want to cooperate mainly because they don't want the ISI and the militant nexus to come open. Some good news for India came from the Interpol that issued a red corner notice against Jesh e Mohammed chief Maulana Masood Azhar and his brother Abdul Rao for their alleged role in the attack. India had built a strong case for seeking UN sanctions against Azhar, but the move was vetoed by China. I think uh, this was the next 
step which was forthcoming and it's a big achievement and i think now even china and pakistan will find it very difficult to support him and i think pakistan will be constrained to stop his free movements and we should see uh, some amount of restriction on his activities and his outfit A joint investigation team from Pakistan visited India from 27 to 31st of March to conduct its own probe. India in turn has been pressing Pakistan to allow a reciprocal visit by the NIA. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. On to some other news. BJP leader and nominated Rajya Sabha MP Subramanyam Swami wants RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan dismissed with immediate effect. In a letter to Prime Minister Narendra Modi Swami alleged that Rajan is not a complete Indian citizen. since he continues to renew his green card issued by the united states after his no holds barred criticism against the rbi governor last week subramanian swami on monday followed it up with a strongly worded letter to the prime minister calling for rajan's immediate dismissal swami alleged that rajan had willfully wrecked the economy the whole economy they has um, been not performing in a way where it affects the masses which means lowering of retail prices which is not taking place is lowered the uh, wholesale prices because people are going out of business and uh, at the same time uh, there is no increase in employment there is in fact a decrease in employment there is unemployment the opposition congress rubbished swami's allegations while speculating on his outburst and he's also heard perhaps that there is a reshuffle around the corner so having an eye on the finance ministry the star the target practice is essentially aimed at the rbi governor the rbi governor has spoken on various issues in the past he even questioned the new methodology to tabulate the gdp numbers meanwhile amid speculation about a possible second term for rajan in september finance minister arun jaitley said that there is a mature relationship between the central bank and the government finance ministry and the rbi are concerned there is uh, an institutional relationship between the two it's a very mature relationship rajan took over as rbi governor in september 2013 when india's inflation was above 10% and the indian rupee was staring at a crisis in 2016 the rupee is stable and inflation down sub 6% levels He kept the interest rates high citing inflationary concerns fighting intense pressure from the finance ministry and the industry for softening them to boost growth. The governor began the process of lowering interest rates in January 2015 and since then it has come down to 1.5%. Kriti Mishra Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile the Congress party has given a notice for breach of privilege against BJP leader Subramanian Swami in the Rajya Sabha. The notice has been given by Congress MP Shantaram Nayak against Swami for allegedly submitting a printout of a website report to level allegations against its leaders including party president Sonia Gandhi in the Augusta Westland issue. Nayak gave the notice under rules 187 and 188 of procedure and conduct of business in the Council of States and appealed to the Rajya Sabha chairman that it be admitted and referred to the Privileges Committee for appropriate action against Swami. referring to an interview of italian judge marco maria maiga by a news channel on the issue the congress leader said swami relied on the transcript of this interview and that he mischievously relied on an authenticated and inadmissible document by all standards to misguide the house thereby committing another breach of privilege and the newly constituted public accounts committee will hold its first meeting today members from the bjp are expected to raise a demand for pac taking up the contentious augusta westland issue at the meeting cg shashikant sharma will do the customary briefing interestingly sharma was earlier defense secretary and the committee will have to face a dilemma if it decides to take up the bvip chopper scam issue and also feels the need to call the former defense secretary the bjp remember had opposed his appointment the bvip chopper scam has led to a huge controversy during the recently concluded budget session of parliament with members from both congress and the bjp sparring over the incident for days together now while the government vowed to track down the main beneficiaries of the kickbacks saying we can do what we could not do in the bofors case congress said it was ready to face a probe that is monitored by the supreme court the 21 member reconstituted panel has seven members from the rajya sabha and 15 from the lok sabha
The center is working on a new legislation to replace the existing Consumer Protection Act. The new law will have penal provisions of 50 lakh rupees and five-year imprisonment for celebrities who are promoting sale of items without verifying the quality of the product. Union Minister Ram Vilas Paswan said that the proposed Consumer Protection Bill 2016 has already been approved by the Parliamentary Standing Committee and would be introduced in Parliament in the next session. Now, in the new legislation, penalty for indulging in a deceiving advertisement would be enhanced to 50 lakh rupees from the current 10 lakh and the jail term to five years from the current two years. Paswan also said the new legislation would have elaborate scope for a consumer to lodge complaint against a substandard product sitting at home and it would also enhance the monetary limits of district and state level consumer redressal courts. जो एस्टेंडिंग कमिटी के या स्थाई समिति के सदस्य हैं, वो मिनी पार्लियामेंट है। इन लोगों का कहना है कि 50 लाख रुपया उसको जुर्माना कीजिए और पांच साल तक का जेल का सजा तय करते हैं कीजिए। अभी जो हमने बैठक बुलाया था, तो अब डिपार्टमेंट उसमें बैठकर के जाएगा, फिर उसमें कैबिनेट फैसला ले� Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries on Rajya Sabha television. Thanks for staying with us on Breakfast News. Now, heavy rains in Dima Hasau has affected normal life in the hill district of Assam, causing landslides at several places, including its headquarters in Haflong. Due to incessant rains and landslips, Half long was completely cut off via land and train services were also cancelled between several places. The district administration on Tuesday declared shutdown of all private and government educational institutions and alerted people not to travel during night time. A student also drowned in Mahu River by accidentally falling into the river and two other people were injured when their houses collapsed. While the main road connecting Half long was hit in several areas leading to transitory blockade, Railway Authority has also cancelled all trains running in the hill section between Silchar and Lomding due to landslides at several places and also damages to the railway tracks. The train services are now likely to be restored only after the tracks are repaired, which might take days depending on weather condition and also the difficult terrain. And back in Delhi, the municipal council elections gave the Congress a reason to celebrate. In the by-elections to 13 wards, the Congress staged a comeback of sorts with four seats, while the BJP managed to get just three. The hero, though, was Aam Admi Party, securing five seats in its debut in the civic polls. By-elections results for the 13 municipal council seats in Delhi on Tuesday brought cheer to the Aam Admi Party and the Congress. The results showed the BJP's hold had slipped after over a decade, even as the Aam Admi Party made its debut and won five seats. The party won in Balli Maran, Vikasnagar, Matiala, Nanakpura and Tehkhand. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal thanked people for helping the party that emerged the largest party in Delhi. The party, however, admitted that it was hoping for a clean sweep. This chunaoke pranam, Aam Aadmi Party ki apne shawon se thoda kam hai. Zara to nahi par kuch ek seete anumanit aur adhik aane ki apneksha thi hamari. Par nishchit roop se ye bahut behtarin shuruat rahi hai Aam Aadmi Party ke liye. Sabse badi party ban karu bharna aur यह चुनाव आगामी 272 वार्डों में जो फाइनल मैच होना है, उसके लिए हमार हमारे लिए एक ये लॉन्च पैड है। The results brought cheer to the Congress as well after drawing a blank in the last assembly polls. The party won in Kamrudin Nagar, Munirka, Khichdipur and Jilmil. Congress candidate Yogita Rathi won from the all-women candidate ward of Munirka. 
कि दिल्ली की जनता अब ये मानने लग गई है कि कांग्रेस पार्टी का शासन सबसे बेहतर था और कांग्रेस पार्टी का शासन वापस आना चाहिए दिल्ली की जनता ने केजरीवाल जी और मोदी जी के आपस के झगड़े की वजह से जो दिल्ली को नुकसान हो रहा है उस तरफ भी दिल्ली की जनता ने अपनी बात कही The BJP suffered the biggest blow. The party that dominates the 272 member civic body was left with Shalimar Bagh North, Nawada and Wazirpur. It held 7 of these seats earlier. 35% vote le kar ke Bharatiya Janata Party ko sarvadhik mat mile hain. Aur Aam Aadmi Party jise Vidhan Sabha chunav mein 52% mat mile the, aaj wo 30% se bhi niche 29% pe ja ke simat gayi hai. Aise mein Delhi ki janta ahankar अराजकता और असत्य की राजनीति से दूर जा रही है ऑफ द टोटल वोट काउंट आम आदमी पार्टी बैक 91,775 वोट्स और 29.93 परसेंट वोट शेयर द कांग्रेस गॉट 76,267 वोट्स और 24.87 परसेंट शेयर द बीजेपी डिस्पाइट फिनिशिंग थर्ड गॉट एज मच एज 34.11 परसेंट शेयर 2,332 नोटा वोट्स वर पोल्ड इन द बाय पोल्स हेल्ड ऑन मे फिफ्टीन The bipoles were necessitated by councillors getting elected to the assembly in 2013 and 2015. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And on the weather front, intense heatwave conditions continue unabated across several parts of North and West India, making it difficult for people to carry out their daily activities. Western Nagpur city has been reeling under severe heatwave conditions, with temperatures hovering between 45 to 47 degrees Celsius in the past few days. The hot weather has boosted sales of cold beverages as thirsty locals have been making a beeline at the juice stalls. Similarly, Ludhiana and Patiala recorded maximum temperatures of 42.1 and 41.2 degrees Celsius respectively. People were seen taking protective measures such as using umbrellas and covering their faces with cloth. Severe heat wave also gripped Ahmedabad and adjoining Gandhinagar as maximum temperatures in both cities was 45 degrees Celsius on Tuesday. Meanwhile, the Med Department says the heat wave is not likely to subside in the next few days. The Ministry of Earth Sciences has attributed the overall hotter climate to the El Nino effect, which can lead to scorching weather across Asia and East Africa, but it can cause heavy rains and floods in South America. Bahar nikalna mushkil, kam pe jana mushkil, office me jana mushkil. 47 ke upar temperature chala gaya hai. और उस उसके ऊपर बच्चों को भी तबियत खराब हो रही है। पिछले साल से गर्मी बहुत ज़्यादा पड़ रही है। इतना बुरा हाल हो कि हम आप देख रहे हो हम उसको नहीं पी रहे हैं यहाँ पे बहुत बुरा हाल है। और इस बार तो क्यों बजे होगा अपने स्किन के जो भी फेस कवर करके जाए जिससे आप गर्मी से बच सको। And on to some international news now. At least 77 people were killed and more than 140 wounded by three bombings in Baghdad on Tuesday, extending the deadliest spate of attacks in the Iraqi capital so far this year and also driving the Shiite fighters into the streets to defend some areas. This is the latest in a deadly militant attacks from the front lines in the country's north and west, where Iraqi forces are battling the Islamic State terror group. The aftermath of bloody violence in Baghdad. More than 70 people have been killed and over 140 wounded in a day of attacks on Tuesday. A car bomb went off in Shiite Sadr city and another vehicle was blown up in the mixed Shiite Sunni neighborhood of Al Rashid, south of the capital. The Islamic State militant group said it was responsible for a suicide bombing in a marketplace in the northern, mainly Shiite Muslim district of Al Shab. The security official in charge of the area was later arrested on the orders of Iraq's Prime Minister. The U.S. administration, an ally of the Iraqi government, strongly condemned the latest string of attacks by Islamic State, saying it is specifically targeting the civilians. Strongly condemns the barbaric terrorist attacks in Iraq today by ISIL that specifically targeted innocent civilians. We extend our deepest condolences to the victims and their families. The string of attacks by ISIL is the latest reminder of the danger that this group poses to all Iraqis and the importance of Iraqi leaders from all communities working together against a common enemy. Security has improved in Baghdad in the recent years, but these attacks and recent assaults have left many residents wondering whether the government can keep them safe from an enemy that shows no sign of backing down. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And news now from war on Syria. The major world powers agreed on Tuesday to try and turn the crumbling partial troops in the country into a more comprehensive ceasefire. 
However, in a meeting in Vienna later in the day, foreign ministers of these countries failed to agree on a new date for peace talks between the warring parties in Syria. According to news reports, a pessimistic atmosphere pervaded the meeting. Countries seem to be in support of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, like Russia and Iran, and those against him, like the United States and other European countries, could not agree on a common date for fresh talks. However, in a joint statement soon after the meeting, leaders of all the participating nations called for a full cessation of hostilities and also access for humanitarian aid. A surge in bloodshed in Aleppo, Syria's largest city before the war, wrecked the partial cessation of hostilities sponsored by Washington and Moscow, which had allowed UN-brokered indirect talks that included the warring sides to take place in Geneva. Those talks, however, collapsed last month after the opposition walked out. <laughs> UN Special Envoy for Syria, Stefan de Mistura, now hopes that the launch of a new round of peace talks between the two sides will take place by the end of this month. We cannot wait too long. We want to keep the momentum. The exact date, I'm not at the moment revealing it because it will depend also on other facts. What we mean by that? Well, we mean that, of course, we're having Ramadan starting soon, so we need to keep that in, in perspective. And we need to bear in mind that credible intra-Syrian talks will become credible when there is a, a credible development on the cessation of hostilities and a credible improvement on the humanitarian side. There is leverage in the fact that this war will not end for him or for his people without a political settlement. Мы поддерживаем борьбу с терроризмом. Мы сегодня на земле не видим другой более эффективной, более реальной силы. And at a time when the U.S.-North Korea tensions are at its peak, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump has expressed willingness to meet North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to discuss Pyongyang's nuclear program. In an interview to Reuters, Trump said he had no problem in speaking to the North Korean leader, adding that he would urge him to stop the nuclear program. He further said that if need be, he would also pressure China to put more pressure on North Korea to change its ways emphasizing that China is Pyongyang's only major diplomatic and economic supporter. Now, Trump's views are a sharp departure from the current U.S. policy towards North Korea and, of course, have not gone down well with the Democrats. I would, I would speak to him. I would have no problem speaking to him. Uh, at the same time, I would put a lot of pressure on China because economically we have tremendous power over China. People don't realize that. Uh, they, are, they are extracting vast billions of dollars out of our country. And a look now at some other international stories in this quick world wrap. Venezuela's National Assembly rejected President Nicolas Maduro's state of emergency decrees, heightening tensions between the opposition-led legislature and the president. Lawmakers from the Democratic Unity Roundtable Coalition said Maduro's effort to broaden police, military and civilian petrol powers to keep the peace deepens the severe disruption of constitutional and democratic order that Venezuela is suffering through. Venezuela's economy is in a dilapidated state and from the time Maduro took over after the death of Hugo Chavez. Libyan military forces managed to recapture the city of Misrata from the Islamic State, reversing some of the gains the militant group made earlier this month. Seven members of the armed forces were killed and 19 others were injured in the conflict, including three who died in a mine explosion as they took control of the checkpoint of Abu Ghraib. The military have yet to take full control of the area but will keep making progress to safeguard Abu Ghraib town from the Islamic State. Eight people were injured in the first day of the traditional bullfighting festival in Peru. The majority of injuries happened during the Jala Toro Act. Local health authorities have declared a state of green alert in nearby clinics, giving the in fact, given the record of injuries at the festival year on year. Despite the incidents, the popular festival will continue till the end of this week. And news now from the sports front. The Wrestling Federation of India will be holding a meeting with decorated wrestler Sushil Kumar later today. This comes after the Delhi High Court directive following Sushil Kumar's plea seeking a trial for selection to the Rio Games. But the hopes of Sushil Kumar competing at the Olympics seem almost over 
as the federation is not keen on conducting a selection trial in the contentious men's 74 kg category. The federation says it would set a wrong precedent and might finish Indian wrestling. The decision to drop Sushil Kumar has snowballed into a major controversy ahead of the mega event in August. Having already won two individual medals at the last two Olympics, the 32-year-old is one of India's biggest sporting icons, but the Wrestling Federation is keen on sending Kota winner Narsing Pancham Yadav to the upcoming Games. The Delhi High Court has asked the Wrestling Federation to sort out the issue amicably. It also sought the response of the Sports Ministry and the Wrestling Federation and asked them to file their affidavits before its next hearing on the 27th of May. The government has already distanced itself from the Rao, saying the Wrestling Federation of India is an independent body. And some more sports stories in this quick sports beat. England will host Sri Lanka at Headingley on Thursday in the first of three tests, and the visitors were training in Leeds on Tuesday. Sri Lankan bowler Damika Prasad has been ruled out of the match after injuring his shoulder during their first tour match against Essex. The second test will be on the 27th of May and the third on the 9th of June, after which England and Sri Lanka will play five one-day internationals and one 2020 match. The US Justice Department on Tuesday opened an investigation into state-sponsored doping by Russian athletes. The probe is being overseen by the US Attorney's Office and is examining Russian officials, athletes, coaches and anyone who benefited from the doping. A World Anti-Doping Agency report in November alleging widespread state-sponsored doping in Russia led to a ban on the country competing in international athletics competitions. 31 athletes from six sports could be banned from this year's Rio Olympics after 454 doping samples were retested from the 2008 Beijing Olympics, the International Olympic Committee said on Tuesday. The IOC also said it would start retesting Sochi 2014 Winter Games samples after allegations of tarnished samples surfaced last week. Maria Sharapova, the five-time Tennis Grand Slam winner, will face an anti-doping panel in London today after taking the banned drug meldonium. The 29-year-old Russian failed a doping test at the Australian Open in January. The International Tennis Federation panel could also issue a four-year ban, but experts say a six- to 12-month punishment is more likely. Spanish club Sevilla is looking to make history when they take on English club Liverpool on Wednesday, that's today, in the Europa League final. Sevilla current holders have won the last two editions of the tournament and hold a record for UEFA League triumphs all in the last decade. And if Sevilla beat Liverpool in Basel, they will become the first team to win three successive Europa League titles. And that's it from us in this bulletin. But for getting more updates, you can log on to our website www.rajasabhatv.com. Goodbye.